employers may start hiring again. We look at the small business sector in the US, which is the biggest employer. The optimism index after recovering short for, for a short while has leveled off again. And profitability for small businesses after recovering a little bit from a, an extremely bad plunge has not continued to climb. So small businesses, both in terms of their optimism and their earnings, reflect a not so good picture. Mind you, given that small businesses are, businesses are the biggest employer in the US, this suggests that they will not start hiring anytime soon. So there will not be a major recovery in the US. So our view, based on some of these statistics, is that the new normal rates of 2 to 3% growth for the US will be the accurate uh, assessment of growth going forward. Um, the question I posed right at the start, that government spending is about to come to be over for most of the world in the US. It will come to an end around the third quarter. It's around, the spending is about 35% complete now. If it's getting into full swing by the third quarter and the fourth quarter, it will be on the decline. In Malaysia, the government's already made this announcement that these uh, 16 billion new stimulus spending will be over by the end of this year. The government's deficit will have to return to 3% of GDP by next year, so the government will not spend as much as it did uh, this year. That means if all these measures the government is taking doesn't work by next year, then sorry, the gravy train has ended. The government hasn't got any more money to spend. Same picture everywhere in the world. And um, also, governments are completing their monetary support and monetary easing. You can see what happened in Australia. They've started raising rates already. Um, Australia and Israel were the two central banks that started easing, uh, ended their easing and started raising interest rates. In Europe, the central bank has already started effectively raising interest rates as well, of ending some of their easing measures. In the US, the Federal Reserve's uh, bond purchase program is almost complete. They have a limit of 1.25 trillion in, gov in uh, mortgage bonds that they can purchase from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in order to keep the lending going in the mortgage markets. They have currently purchased about 1.13 trillion. So they've got only about 100 billion left to spend. So this program will come to an end next month in the US, the mortgage market program. And uh, therefore, the picture is that governments around the world are starting to withdraw their big stimulus, the monetary easing, the government spending, all that will come to an end by this year, by the end of this year. Will they start raising rates? Of course, some of you may have read the um, ben, ben Bernanke, the Federal Reserve Chairman, says he'll keep rates for as low as, for as low as, uh, for this low, at the current levels for as long as he can foresee into the future. But let's see whether his hands may be forced by developments in, on the inflation front. Now, the argument that interest rates can be kept low for the foreseeable future is premised on the, this, this axiom that inflation is not possible when industrial capacity utilization is so low. But let's look at the picture for the UK. And this is why this argument may not hold. This is the UK Manufacturing Production Index. It remains at very low levels. But look at the inflation rate. The inflation rate has just gone spiking up sky high. So there is a lot of expectations, therefore, that the central banks will next, the next move is they'll have to raise interest rates to, if nothing else, but to combat the return of inflation. So this argument that uh, because industrial capacity utilization is so low, therefore they can keep interest rates very low for very long, this may not hold for, for very much longer.
Um, there are other indications that the recovery is not strong. The U.S. services sector, you can see the recovery is just barely getting underway, not uh, moving up very quickly in the positive growth territory like the last recession. Um, then, the, as I pointed out, uh, one of the major sources of growth for countries in the region, if you think that the U.S. cannot support growth, can China support growth? Well, this is a picture of China. The landing spike that we saw in the middle of uh, the year, last year, which kept Chinese GDP growth very high, that's easing off. The banks are easing back their loans. Um, least of all because the banks themselves don't have capacity to, capacity to lend. You can see this, I've uh, got this statement here from the Chinese Banking Regulatory Commission statement. They are warning the bank that they, they'll be very careful not to exceed the capital requirements floor. If they fall below that, they'll be penalized. So the banks have to, can only lend up to a level. They can't continue, they can't sustain this huge spike in lending. And remember this credit impetus was the big driver for China's GDP growth. We had reports uh, earlier this week that China's fourth quarter GDP growth turned it at a very strong 10.7%. This is the picture for China's GDP growth. It's back to levels in 2000, late 2007, because this was a spike to 13 plus percent. And what's the impact on China's interest rates? You can see the People's Bank of China, the one-year bills rate have started to climb again. The Bond yields starting to climb again, and the inflation rate, that's all in response to the rise, the return or resurgence of China's inflation rate. So all this stimulus and easy money and government spending, all of that's coming to an end. So what do we look at for next year? Uh, I'll say a longer term outlook. The carry trade, which is the funding from the US dollar, simply flowing out of the US in search of higher returns is an unreliable driver of medium-term growth. Inventory restocking, which is happening in the US because companies didn't order any new stocks, uh, they basically exhausted their stock by selling, they actually sold from their stocks and didn't reorder. And once they're out of stock, they started ordering again this restocking is driving U.S. growth and it will fizzle out by the second quarter of this year. Um, there is jobless recovery in the U.S. If pe there are so many unemployment and unemployed people in the U.S., how can they spend? How can they um, be the driver for a new spell of consumption-driven growth? That cannot happen. So in general, we agree with the PIMCO view PIMCO is the world's largest bond fund manager. Their view is that U.S. growth will be trapped between the 2 to 3% annual growth rate. This is not a quarterly growth. Quarterly growth, we could go up to 4 or 5%, but annual growth, maybe 2 or 3% for a long, long time. And we also have the Balker rule, which was um, proclaimed by President Obama just middle of this week on Thursday. Uh, that will keep the bank's growth weak and delay recovery of the banks. So in the future, we expect economic cycles to be short. That means recessions will be more frequent. That's bad for business planning. China, which, was, which is a big driver of growth in the Asian region, will have to ease back its measures by the second quarter of this year. And that's taking away. Oh, all, all this recovery is being driven by a flow of money. You don't need the flow of money to actually stop. You just need a reduced flow of money for the growth rate to actually come tumbling down. And that's what we see that's coming up ahead. So China's growth will probably ease off, and as a result, we can't depend on China for growth anymore. Um, Longer term, Malaysia's GDP growth, 4.5%, maybe 3 to 5%. The best years, maybe 5%, not so 